In this video, I want to show you how you can set up email alerts for your Power BI reports using Power Automate. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernanda and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So without further ado, let's go through this demo that I prepared for you today. So here we have a very simple data set that we have on my Google Sheets and we have some information about grocery sales that were ordered and bought. So we have things like the name of the grocery, how many were bought, the unit price, and the cost of the product. And using the Google Sheets dataset, we created a very simple Power BI report in Power BI Desktop, which just has the total sales, which just calculates it by multiplying unit price and quantity against these three different categories of products here. So we have the beans, bread, and cheese. And looking at the data model here, all I've done is I've created a grouping of category, which just looks at the product names and checking what type of product they are, if they are uh, bread, cheese, or beans. So by creating a grouping here, we are able to show it as uh, you know different total sales here if we filter it by these categories. So the beans would have sold 376 in total, bread and cheese. A very typical requirement that you might get uh, from your customers is to get alerts if certain numbers change within your reports. And Power BI gives you that ability to set up and manage your alerts for your reports. However, you can't do it in Power BI Desktop. You need to do it in the service. So what I've done uh, is I have published this report, this exact same report, into my Power BI service in my workspace. So you'll see we just have the exact same thing. So we have the total sales here, and then we have the uh, different slices of categories here. So let's say I'm a customer and I want to monitor the total sales that we're making for beans. So if I click on beans, I want to be notified when these total sales hit more than 500 pounds. How do I do that? So the first thing that you need to do is you need to pin the visual into your dashboards because uh, you can't set up alerts in reports. You can only do it in dashboards. And you need to make sure that you have the right slice for your visual before you pin it and then you want to click the pin button when you hover over the visual, the pin icon here. We don't have a dashboard right now, so we'll create a new one. So let's say we'll just name it alerts for now. And just bear in mind that when you pin a visual, it retains the filter context that you've applied to it. So you'll see that if you look at the alerts, um, the visual that we put here is 376, and this is what's showing us the beans even though the total sales without the filter context is 3000. So it retains the filter context that you have. This means that you can pin the same visual with a different filter context to tell a story within the dashboard. I'll cover how to use dashboards fully in another video. But for now, just understand that it preserves the filter context that you apply to it. So let's say we want to show bread as well in our dashboard. And then let's do cheese as well, just to be complete. Let's go to our dashboards here. From here, because you create them as tiles, you can do you can edit their details to make sure that we don't confuse them. So this is total sales for beans, and then we have bread and cheese. So let's do uh, edit details. We'll name this one for bread, and then this one for cheese. So now let's get back to the task at hand. We want to apply an alert to the total sales of the beans so that when it reaches 500 pounds, it alerts us via email. So how you can do that is clicking the same button here, ellipsis, for more options. And you'll see the button here, manage alerts. This is where you'll be able to set up uh, that value. So let's create a new alert rule. Let's set it as active. And let's say we want to set the condition to above 500. So let's say if this value reaches more than 500, uh, I want you to send an email to me or notify me. 
Uh, pay attention to the maximum notification frequency because you can only set the uh, alerts either once an hour or once every 24 hours. So save and close. So now you've saved and closed your alerts. You should be able to find it uh, as a list here. When you hit manage alerts, it will be here as a different alert. But now what you'll notice is that you uh, don't have the ability to add recipients to this alert. Uh, and just bear in mind that you need to send an alert to your customers when the total sales for beans reaches 500. So you can do that by using Power Automate, which you will have here as a link. So you can, if you click that, it will link you to the Power Automate uh, site. Now, because I already have a Power Automate account, it links me straight to the flow. However, if you've never used Power Automate before, it will ask you to sign up. Don't worry, it's free to do so. Uh, and when you're able to sign up and complete that process, it will bring you back to this page, which uh, links you directly to the type of flow that you want to use in order to take advantage of uh, the automation from Power BI Alerts, right? So this flow, what it does is it, uh, uh, you're able to string up a custom action based on an alert that was driven in Power BI. So in this case, we want the alert to trigger a custom action to send an email to our customer some recipients. So from here, let's hit continue. And it brings us here to this page here. So we'll check, just make sure that the alert ID is here. And you just have to make sure that your alert is saved in, uh, in, in Power BI. It should show up here as a value. And now the next thing is you need to add a step, which in this case, we want to send an email. So we'll just type email here, send an email notification. Let's, let's click that. And here we have three things. We can choose the recipients, the subject and the body. So, I mean, let's just do it for testing sake. Let's add my personal email and let's say subject total sales for beans reached 500 pounds. And we'll do the same thing for the body. Uh, let's hit save. So before we go through the test, let's recap what we've done. We've created a dashboard which shows the total sales between our three different product categories. We've set up an alert in the Power BI service. When the total sales of beans reaches more than 500 pounds, it should send us an email or a notification. And lastly, we've set up a flow within Power Automate, which gets triggered when the alert in the Power BI service gets triggered, which sends an email, a custom email to my personal email email or to your customer telling us that we have reached the threshold. And in order to uh, simulate that we have more orders, we need to add more orders for beans. So we'll go to the very end of these orders um, and we want to just add beans products underneath here, just more beans to rack up the total sales. And I've already actually done that. So I will just copy this. And all it does is it just increases the number of total sales of the beans to simulate the fact that we have more sales for the category beans, basically. Just make sure that it's saved. And then from Power BI, we need to make sure that the uh, report, the data set has a connection between the, um, the Power BI reports and the data source on the web. So that should be okay. So now all you need to do is hit refresh now to refresh our data set. So you see it refreshed at 16.07. It took three seconds to refresh. Let's go back to our alerts here. Oh, actually we have, uh, don't have enough, it seems. Let's go back to reports here. Is, was that 496? I'm not sure now. So maybe let's add some more values here. They didn't quite reach 500. So I'm just increasing the quantity bought the last order that should make it to at least 500. 
So now let's go back to the uh, data set. Let's refresh it again. And I just like seeing the last refresh succeeded. This is, shows you the refresh history. So I've just refreshed it again, which now if we go back to the report, uh, make sure the visuals are refreshed. So now that's 552. And if we go back to the dashboard itself, uh, but this shows you the kind of notification that you get in the notification center when you set up alerts on your Power BI service. So you get a uh, pop-up showing what kind of alert you get in combination with the email from the Power Automate. So now if we look back to my email, you'll see that uh, Power Automate sent us that email that we've set up. So it's reached the threshold. So it sends us this email saying uh, with the subject, and the uh, body that we have specified. And we can check and make sure that Power Automate definitely did that by going back to the R flows here in Power Automate. If you click the flow that we have created here, you'll see that uh, it shows you the history of runs when it succeeded. So it shows us that um, when I did a refresh a couple of minutes ago, it gives us the time and how long it took to, um, to run the flow. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how easy it is to set up and manage alerts within your Power BI reports. Leave a like on this video if it helped you. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media links that are included in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching, guys. See you again on the next one.